This is the Pine Barrens, the Franklin Parker Preserve. You can actually see pine trees, mostly pitch pines around me. That is the predominant type of tree that you'll find here. Uh, there are others, of course. There are some deciduous trees, but not that many. It's a really sandy soil. It's actually a globally endangered type of habitat. And um, what this particular place used to be, as you'll see when we come to this clearing, it used to be a cranberry bog or cranberry bogs. And it's being restored to wetlands. It's multi-use, so you may well, unfortunately, hear um, some gunshots in the background. They're doing some deer management, so people are hunting and culling the herd, if you will. Um, there are people who will debate the um, necess necessity for that or the morality of that. And that's not what I'm here to do. And there are some valid ecological reasons to think that it is a good idea. I'm not, again, not even offering an opinion on that. Just saying you hear the gunshots right now. So I just wanted to explain that to you. But you can see the what they're doing here for this freshwater wetland that is part of the pine barrens. And if we see anything really interesting as we go, I will put it on video. Key of the red winged blackbirds behind me. In front of me, you can actually see some of the flower buds on the red maple are starting to break and actually burst a bit right there. You can see them coming out. It is the beginning of spring. It's March 13th today. So we are getting some different spring-like occurrences happening and this will continue, of course. You can actually see here that this tree was on fire at one point and that one and quite a few in the back. And I know from just looking at them that this was in 2017, no, there was a sign. Um, but we intentionally set fire to them to help them regenerate and help the understory say a little, little bit more open. Here's a pitch pine. You can tell by the different shade of green compared to some other pines. It's young, that's actually even lighter being young. Um, you can also tell by how many needles are in each bundle. If you take that out, here's a bundle having your three pine needles right there. Um, anyway, you can see this is a female um, pine cone. Also have the male on the outside as well. And when you need this plant to regenerate again, fire can open up that pine cone and let the seeds release. quickly want to highlight what this area is really all about by looking at the soil and coupling that with the vegetation above. If you look above, you see pines, you see conifers, you see needle bearing trees and the needles themselves actually add to the difficulty for a lot of other plants to become established in this soil type. But if, if they were to really become established, if a lot of deciduous trees were here, and you can clearly see that's not the case, the soil quality is going to change. It's going to become more organic material in the soil. And when that happens, the pines are going to be at a disadvantage. They're at an advantage in sandy soil only really because of their ability to deal with the nitrogen poor type of environment that they grow in. Deciduous trees need that nitrogen in the soil, whereas pine trees, due to the nature, nature of symbiotic relationship found on their roots, can deal with that type of soil. And they do. And they repress. They inhibit the growth of a lot of deciduous plants here.
can't really see well, but kind of following and being followed by an eastern Phoebe, which is a flycatcher. It's our first one that really comes back in the spring. So they're here at this time of year. You can see the cranberry bog. That's an ocean spray facility that's down here. 